Hundar here. I'm sitting with Daniel Erickson, lead writer for Old Republic, and we're going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, right off the bat, though, crew skills. Um, we sort of have seen how that the breakdown on that's going to work, uh, encapsulating crafting and, and the companions. Can you just describe it a little bit in brief? Absolutely. So crew skills was... Um brought up to address a couple of questions. One, we always said we wanted to make sure that you were a hero, that you were playing uh, in the movies, not a day in the life of Star Wars. So you were only going to do things, you know, we would put up the WWVD, what would Vader do? Uh, you were only going to do heroic, amazing things. Um, but there were also a whole bunch of us that were really passionate about crafting and loved crafting in MMOs. Right. And we saw those ones headed to a crash pretty <laughs> fast. We're like, all right, well, Vader's not going to make boots. Right. But I've got all these companion characters back in the ship. And classically in a, uh, in a Bioware game, you've got a couple companion characters you really like that you take out and a whole bunch of them that you ignore. So we said, well, this is a great thing. We're going to make the crew skills system. We're going to make all these guys who are back on the ship, we're going to put them to work. And then I can be the crew boss. I'm still the guy who gets the prestige. It's still my maker's mark on the items. I'm still the guy who's doing everything. But all the actual crafting, hands-on, nitty-gritty, you know, dirt under the nails is going to be done by my companions. When you play RPGs, what, what role do you typically take on as the tank or the healer or DPS? Is there something you favor? It really depends on what the social aspect is I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to be the alt guy because I tend to like to see everything. Right. I'm definitely an explorer type. Um, I tend to be healer when I know I've got the social group for it. So if I've got a group that's set aside, which is a way I love to play, I tend to have a character that's set aside just to play with my friends. Right. And then if they're not around, I've got somebody else I play. Lone and, wolf character. Yeah, and then my lone wolf <laughs> character is usually the DPS guy. Um, so can you talk about the breakdown? We've got some new, like within each one, the crafting um, mm -hmm. and gathering. Uh, I saw there was uh, splicing. Can you describe some of the, the subcategories a little bit? Absolutely. So there's three big categories for crew skills. There's gathering, crafting, and mission skills. Mm -hmm. Gathering is, uh, at the beginning, sort of what you'd expect. So you can go out, there's stuff in the world, you say, hey, that looks like it'd be useful. You can grab it, you can point at your companion and you say, hey, why don't you grab it? Um, which can actually be useful in a number of situations where you're trying to, let's say you're in an area that you really shouldn't be in for your level, mm -hmm. but you want to be able to gather something that's in that area. <laughs> you can throw yourself into combat and pull a, a mob away from the node and then send your companion to do it, right? right? And just keep yourself away long enough. Um, then there's crafting, which is a classic. Hey, so uh, for instance, in gathering, you've got bioanalysis where you go and you get DNA samples from living tissue or dead tissue, things that you've defeated. You take that back for your crafting. You go to your ship, you've got biochemistry. Now you can make adrenals, which make you like very, very strong for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Stim packs to heal you up. Implants, which are permanent items, very, very coveted. Then the mission skill system, which is a totally new thing. And this is, you're going to send your companions off on sort of mini quests, all on their own. It's kind of offstage missions. And each one of the mission skills is to get a different thing. So diplomacy is totally to get light side and dark side points. So you open up the thing, you say, hey, here's a cool uh, mission. I'm going to send off one of my companions. They're going to sort of spread my influence out in the galaxy. And then I'm going to get dark side points because I sent them to do a dark side thing, or light side points because I sent them to do a light side thing. Uh, treasure hunting, by contrast, is for loot. Right. You say, hey, just go get me some mad loot. Um, one of the things that's interesting is all the gathering skills also come with a mission skill of it. Mm -hmm. So if I don't want to go head off to Coruscant to get, you know, I know that there's a really basic item I need, mm -hmm. I can actually just call back to the ship and send somebody on a mission specifically to go get items for my biochem. Not limited to, to like sticking to one and only being able to access stuff like that, or is it a lockdown system? You're not limited between the three. You can mix and match, but you are limited in how many you can take. Okay. Uh, so there's a very strategic approach to it. People who are not traditional crafters, mm -hmm. who don't actually tend to enjoy the crafting game, are probably going to pull towards the mission skills, because you can always have your players out there. Missions go from five minutes to 23 hours. You can always keep your people doing, and it's an aggregate positive. Right? You just send them on missions, you get cool stuff back, right. you come in 23 hours later and you're like hoping for a crit. Mm -hmm. uh, all the companion characters have skills that uh, they're better at than other ones, and your affection with your companions makes your crit chances go up. So what you're hoping for is that big roll on your treasure hunting, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, they brought me back some incredible blue item and I'm super psyched now. People who are more hardcore crafters are probably going to concentrate directly into paired up gathering and crafting skills, mm -hmm. or if they decide they really want to go for it, they might be doing all crafting skills while going for auction house and things like that. 
if you want to be somebody who's wants to make sure you want to get into crafting but you're not willing to make the investment to sort of start your own business and lose the money you might balance it out with some crafting stuff and some mission skills to make sure that you can still bring in an income to sort of offset what you're putting down let's say they go heavily into crafting will they have an advantage over people who maybe opt for the mission skills instead um, it really depends on how good they are and how dedicated they are. So things that are important about the crafting system and the crew skill system. We are absolutely dedicated to some of the best stuff on the server being made by the crafters. Um, that said, they need it's a social game, right? They need the entire society because the best ingredients are going to be things that can only be gotten from being out there in the field and finding them there. Uh, there's also rare recipes. Uh, there are going to be people on the server who know things that you don't know as a crafter. Other master craftsmen who have their own specialties and things that only they can make. Mm -hmm. Will that guy have a advantage over the guy who did all the mission skills? It really depends. If the guy with the mission skills has been saving all that money and he can then go buy the thing from the crafter, right? It's sort of as, as real life. You can either you can either manufacture or you can purchase manufactured goods. It really depends on your passions. Right. So does that sort of strengthen the role of the community end game in terms of like the economy and like tr active trading versus just like oh I you know I, I went grinding and did all these quests and killed this you know to get this? Does that sort of push that into a more of a spotlighted role? Absolutely, and we have both going on. So there are absolutely amazing drops, and there's going to be amazing stuff, you know, in the raids, in places like that. But there's also incredibly good stuff that only comes from crafting that sort of balances that out. And one of the big things is because we made crafting a time-based concept, we can actually balance out uh, what it takes to become sort of the mega crafter, right? You cannot just go say, hey, I wasn't doing biochemistry at all before, but now I'm really high level, I've got a ton of money, I'm just going to drop it all in and I'm going to be Master Crafter tomorrow. Because it's going to take you 24 hours to pull off one really high level item. So okay, now that guy's booked. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, you can, you can jam five of your guys on that crafting table at once, but you're still limited. Well, can you elaborate a little bit on the light side and dark side points and why that would be a, a valuable commodity in terms of choosing mission skills? Absolutely. There's sort of two sides to it. Maybe you made some decisions earlier in your life that you're not so proud of. Maybe you want to atone for some of your dark side actions as a young man. There are dark side and light side rewards. There are gear restrictions. Uh, there is some power stuff that we haven't got to talk about yet. Um, there are some game things that you might say, hey, I really want that. Um, or you just might want to make sure that when somebody looks at your character, there's a nice blazing. You know, you want to make sure you're the darkest of the dark. Uh, so there's a few different reasons you might decide to be to be the diplomat on that one. I could be a, a Jedi Consular with a really like a mean streak in terms of my dark side points, or like a Sith with like a heart of gold, so to speak. Morality and faction are always separate because we want everyone to have the full Bioware experience. Um, obviously, each of the classes starts to, in a different place on the light side dark side meter to begin with, right? A Sith naturally starts dark and has a very hard fight to go up. If I'm kind of uh, you know, I, I'm kind of secretly dark Jedi guy, uh, but I don't want to be seen that way, and I don't want people saying, oh, like, I don't know if I'm the group with this guy. Um, I might be really just taking the cheap way out all the time in my quests and doing totally dark side things, and then sending all my people out to spread the good word of my name and kiss babies and <laughs> give money to small, poor people and things and, <laughs> and keep myself in a pretty level light side, dark side place.